All right, guys, I'm to welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today, me and Nick will be breaking down rivalry week. Florida State traveling to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville to take on the Gators. Six point favorites are the Knowles. Total 51, 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Looking at the Florida State offense, Nick, you know, you know, purse up for Jordan Travis, you know, suffering a major uh, leg or ankle injury. I haven't really seen the specifics on that, uh, but it was awful, you know, seeing it live. Um, he's done for his career at Florida State. Uh, and, you know, that's just awful for Travis, who's having a phenomenal season. So going to be, you know, an all-conference performer in this conference. And then, you know, this team's also undefeated, Nick. They're on the cusp of a college football playoff berth, a potential national championship. All comes crashing downhill in a meaningless game against North Alabama. Um, you know, this completely changes the dynamic here. Tate Rodmaker from Valdosta, Georgia, is going to take over. You know, he was able to get the job done in relief. He started a game a season ago at Louisville. Um, actually, I don't even know if he started. I know he played in that game, though. Had to come in there and make some big throws, and they were able to get the job done on the road with a four-point victory. He's going to end up getting a start in two weeks against that same Cardinal team. Uh, you know, 20-31 this season, 13-23, 2-17, two touchdowns against that inferior opponent in the blowout victory. All the weight's on his shoulders now, Nick. You know, what do you make of this, you know, you know, horrible injury, and now this young player being thrusted into a major situation here? Man, if you're a Florida State fan, it's got to be brutal. If you're Jordan Travis, it's absolutely brutal. You know, prayers up, like you said. Kevin Ware-esque injury. I think everyone remembers where they were when that happened for that Louisville Cardinal during the NCAA March Madness tournament. You know, very similar in- injury in that regard. You know, sort of bad contact injury that looked like that. It's a shame because Jordan Travis is having a fantastic season, just a really great season for him and a fantastic career at Florida State for the for the quarterback who was great on the ground, great at throwing the ball. Ultimately, you know, a running play was what the final nail for him sadly was. This is tough for Florida State. They find themselves in a very tough position here. And the media has been talking about this a lot. There have been a lot of different other publications I read and listen to that have been talking about if Florida State wins out, how they may still not get in the playoff because the committee might not pick them. Due to this issue, I, we're going to have to cross that bridge when we get there. they got to first get through this tough matchup here with Florida on the road and Louisville in the S, in the ACC title game. Tate Rodmaker steps in. He's a good kid, you know, a veteran. He's been around the program for a while, which is good. I think it's nice to have a guy that's experienced, has experience in college football, which is, makes me feel a little more comfortable about this. He looked okay in relief against their, you know, token opposition in, in I think it was North Alabama. They're going to have to rely on the run game a whole lot in this game. They're going to have to change up their offense here. This is a completely different dynamic. Mike Norvell and his company certainly have their work cut out for them this week. Yeah, I mean, really the rest of the year they're going to lean on this running game. And, you know, they've certainly been a nice complimentary piece to what's been a really good passing attack. Um, They only have two games of over 150 yards rushing, though, on Power 5 opponents, that being Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Of course, they beat up on USM and Northern Alabama. 4.9 yards per carry on the year for this team. 137 yards per game in conference play, um, you know, 17 touchdowns as well. So, I mean, this is a nice rushing attack. I certainly wonder if, you know, the efficiency will take a significant boost now, or more so the effectiveness uh, now that Travis has went down, you know, 6.2 yards per attempt for Trey Benson, Lawrence Tafali, 5.9 of his own right. So there's certainly a lot of efficiency here. So some of these numbers I'm not really too worried about. Benson's been only used for 119 attempts. So they're keeping these guys fresh and healthy, Nick. You love to see that late into the season, especially if you're making a playoff push. 743 and 11 touchdowns for Benson. He's been a real explosive runner at times this year. Um, you look at some of the guys on the offensive line, they're going to have to lead the charge. Jeremiah Byers, a right tackle. He hasn't been the greatest since transferring over from UTEP. Uh, you know, Demetri Emanuel has been a pretty sound player for them. Uh, his right guard spot, Darius Washington, whenever he's been on the field, whatever, you know, if it's center, left tackle, he's been great. Uh, Maurice Smith, he's going to be questionable for this game. Uh, they like what they have at center in terms of run blocking. Andre Jones has also been very sound, especially in pass protection. So this is an offensive line. It's not only going to be big for their quarterback, but for this run game, they're going to have to be, you know, leaned on a little bit more, it seems, Nick. But um, they're prepared for it with how fresh these backs are. At least that's one silver lining you have. Certainly a silver lining. If you're a Florida State fan, this offensive line is a phenomenally physical unit. It's got to step up here and be big for this offense. Trey Benson. He's going to be your bell count here. He's going to be the one carrying the load for this offense from here on out. He has a good opportunity against a Florida defense that's gotten torched on the ground in some games this season. We've seen that happen against Kentucky. We saw that happen against LSU. So if I'm a Florida State fan, I feel good about that. Trey Benson, 743 yards on the ground this season, 6.2 yards per carry. 
11 scores. Also pretty good in the pass game, which is kind of a moot point at this point. But still interesting to note, he does have 17 receptions for 240, or 214 and a score. They have Lawrence Tofolia as well on, on the backup. Back 322 and three touchdowns for him. This is a good room that has a nice one-two punch there. In general, not a bad running game. I like this offense's potential to move on here from Travis and take over with Tate Rodmaker. You know, be more of a game manager and sit in the pocket and get the job done. I certainly think it's possible. Good news here is he has a great supporting cast, not just in the backfield, but the receiving room. They seem to be fully healthy after, you know, being a bit questionable here the past couple of weeks. Johnny Wilson, his eight games, 33 grabs, 532, two touchdowns. He can make, you know, quick work down the seam. Nice high point down there on the boundary. Of course, he's a threat in the red zone. Keon Coleman, though, he has 11 touchdowns of the 25 that Florida State has through the air this year. 45 wrecks, 615 yards along with that. He's an explosive player. Made his impact belt all the way back in week one, and he certainly has been a pretty consistent performer this season for the Knowles. You know, three straight games of his scoring a touchdown. And then Jaheim Bell, he's also been a very quiet, uh, nice player here for Florida State. You know, he certainly hasn't been involved running the ball like you've seen at South Carolina. It's really just been, a, you know, mainly a slot, flat option. Kyle Morlock's gotten more involved as of late. Um, you know, they're not really showcasing a lot of depth in this receiving core, but the guys that are getting involved, Morlock, he's 6'6", 240. Bell has that versatility. And then you have two NFL guys in Coleman and Wilson, Nick. This is exactly what you want, especially if you can have those clean pockets. Rodmaker certainly just has to make the right decisions, the right throws. It's got to be accurate on time. But this isn't a major burden here, especially going on the road against a bad defense. I don't think it is a major burden going on the road against a bad defense. You know, I think as long as, like you said, he makes the right decision, keep his head on straight, has a good week of practice, like this offense will be fine. I think Bell has been fine in the slot at tight end. You know, putting him in the slot has worked for this, hasn't really been that physical run blocking tight end that we thought he could be like he was at South Carolina. He's been good, though, at Florida State. I like what he's been able to do, 465, 12.9 yards per grab, and, 12, and two scores, Johnny Wilson, 16.1 yards per grab for him and 13.7 yards for grab for Keon Coleman, the 11 touchdowns, just a phenomenal number, big physical wide receiver. We knew he was an athlete. We saw him an athlete in the past at Michigan state, and he's really living up to that hype and expectations this year. He can certainly change a game at any moment. This offense, it's obviously devastating to lose a guy like Jordan Travis. It certainly is disappointing, but I think this offense will be fine this week. I think it could be fine against Louisville as well. They got to just keep their head on straight and focus and know the game plan and don't stray too much from the run game. If you can avoid doing that, this offense should be in a good spot spot they have a lot of talented pieces and the supporting cast has to be reliable no drops false starts can't have it so they certainly have to step up as well around this young quarterback looking at the gator offense you know this has been a pretty impressive unit i'd say this year you know about 30 points per game putting up plenty of yards you know 425 a contest um this unit has certainly accomplished a lot more than we thought but look at them they're also down to a backup quarterback graham mertz hurt against missouri ends the year with a 73 percent completion rate 20 touchdowns and three picks i mean just phenomenal work this year from mertz Definitely performed a lot better than I thought he would. Turn to Max Brown, true freshman quarterback here, came in relief there against Missouri, and he had the hot hand. This offense had a lot of momentum, and he certainly didn't waver. You know, 56 yards, 4 or 5 passing. Also ran for 42 yards on 7 carries. So, you know, that was last week, Nick. Again, the offense was red hot against the Tigers. They had a great game plan going into that one, and they had some nice balance. Now you turn to a new week, fresh start. You're not going to have that same momentum. So you're going to have to lean on your rushers as well. You know, Trevor Etienne, Montreal Johnson, both have 710 yards each, combined 12 touchdowns, 150 yards per game for this rushing attack. It's really found its footing as of late, a buck 81 against LSU, 261 against Missouri. That's a run defense that's really been impressive against Georgia and Tennessee, and they just absolutely flatlined them there. Um, and certainly they've struggled at points, and now they're facing a tough defensive line by Florida State that's been vulnerable to some big runs. I think this is a nice one-two punch, though Florida has one of the best in the country. I certainly think they're going to be in for a good day here. At least a buck 50, 200 is what I'm expecting. This is a very good rushing attack. That is a solid unit that comes against this Florida State defense with an opportunity to bail out their new quarterback. It's a shame because Graham Mertz is having a really good season, better than we expected, you know, obviously. We thought that Mertz might be a little bit better at a school like Florida after being kind of handcuffed with the offense he had up in Madison. But now he jumps down to Florida. He had a better season than I expect. I think any of us really could have expected. 72% completion percentage, nearly 3,000 yards passing, 20 touchdowns to three interception ratio. Now it's Max Brown's offense. Brown is very good on the ground, a physical runner who can make things happen on the ground. We saw that in his limited appearance against Missouri. So I trust him to run the ball. I think this is solid. Then you have a fantastic supporting cast behind him on the ground of two incredible backs, Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne, both with 7'10 yards on the ground. Etienne, eight scores. 
Johnson with four scores. They have Tatum Tatum Webb as well, who has two scores, a smaller number, but he can still be involved. This is a nice uh, duo, potentially even a trio if you want to put the true freshman Webb in there as well. So I like what this offense can do. And then now you have Max Brown, who is also solid on the ground and can be really involved. If the offensive line is physical and wins the matchup with the defensive line, this offense for Florida can certainly run the ball and get a ton of yards on the ground. We saw them get a lot of yards against Tennessee earlier in the season and what would eventually be a win in the swamp. The crowd's going to be behind you. It's going to be a good atmosphere. Certainly an opportunity for success for this Florida running game. The Florida Gators are one of the youngest teams in this conference, but one of their seniors, Ricky Persall, leads the team in yards and reception, 64 for 948, has four scores. Eugene Wilson, a freshman. Arliss Boardingham, another newcomer. These guys have been really good in the receiving game. Wilson, especially, 500-plus yards, six touchdowns. has been a nice uh, you know, possession pass catcher as of late. You know, he had seven grabs for 23 yards. Only a 3.2-yard average. I mean, that's terrible for a receiver, but they're trying to get him the ball, and I love that game plan. You know, he's had, you know, six-plus receptions since the 7th of October. So they're getting this guy the football. He's going to be a big part of their future moving forward. He can certainly hurt you downfield. Khalil Jackson's been a nice pass catcher. He's come down with some impressive receptions this season. Other than that, though, you have Montreal Johnson with 30 receptions. ETN, they like to get the ball out to in the flats as well. This receiving core isn't the most impressive, Nick, but I think they certainly had a good thing going with those top two in Persall and Wilson. I think for the future, you have some nice weapons, but here against Florida State, a secondary that is phenomenal. You got to be really good in this contest with a young quarterback. Like you said, I think you're going to look to see maybe 40, 50 rushing attempts in this contest. Certainly expect him to run the ball a whole lot. Ricky Purcell is a guy who's been getting a lot of love nationally. Some social media pages have been shouting him out. He's having a great season, a really nice wide receiver. The 14.8 yards per grab is pretty nice. Four scores, nearly 1,000 yards receiving for him. Should get close to that with a bowl game. He might be able to hit that if Florida's able to get bowl eligible. Eugene Wilson, 502 yards for him. Six scores, good numbers for him. The yards per catch is a little concerning, right below 10. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Johnson, ETN involved in the passing game as well. Johnson, 30 receptions. Pretty good numbers for him. Outside of that, it kind of drops off pretty quickly here. You got a young quarterback in here, so you got to be a little careful against this secondary because a guy like Max Brown could make mistakes, and this secondary is going to pounce on mistakes. They're very physical, a good ball-hawking unit. That could definitely be a mismatch disadvantage for Florida. I definitely think running the ball is going to be the key to success for this offense in this matchup with Florida State. The offensive line is certainly capable with some of that physicality and size. He talked about, you know, Jake Swatter at center. He's been terrific this year. Um, this unit overall, though, hasn't been as good as I thought they would be. Richie Leonard's kind of disappointed. Austin Barber didn't play last game. He's going to be questionable for this contest uh, at left tackle. And, you know, he certainly hasn't been the greatest in pass protection like I thought he would be. Damian George, the Alabama transfer, he's really been even worse at the right tackle spot. So pass protection's really been tough for them. I think the interior is something you still got to lean on. But, again, they still have done a pretty good job of running the football this year. This offensive line, Nick, toughest test of the season. Uh, well, you know, one of the tougher ones, you could certainly say. Um, they really struggled when it comes to blitzes from Georgia and then running the ball. They certainly had a little bit of success, but for the most part, they really struggled. This is a pretty comparable defensive line, I guess you could say. Again, they've been prone to giving up big plays, um, but that's going to be the game plan. They run the ball a lot, and they got to be able to win those matchups here. So I think this could be a good coming out party for the Florida offensive line at home, but in pass protection, especially with a young quarterback against the secondary, could be bad news bears. It could certainly be trouble for this offensive line, this physical unit that could get face a tough defensive line here. And then the secondary, we keep talking about this Florida State secondary. We'll get to them in a second. A very great unit. I think the key to success is run, run, run the ball. You're going to have the crowd behind you. You're going to be in a home environment. Do not avoid, avoid mistakes on offense. Cannot be behind the chains early. No false starts. No illegal motions, anything like that. You, if a home team's getting those problems with a, with a young quarterback at offense, that could be a certain, certainly a huge issue for the team. Focus on what you got to do. Makes Max Brown comfortable and run the ball a whole lot. Like you said, 40 to 50 attempts. I think that's the key to success for this offense. Now looking at that Florida State defense, certainly hasn't been the dominant unit we kind of expected, especially when it comes to big, giving up big plays in the secondary. They're still sitting around 17 points per game, though. The defensive line certainly has been, you know, showcasing plenty of their talent. Joshua Farmer, Jared Verse only has six and a half TFL. He's still a highly impactful pass rusher, though. Patrick Payton, higher in terms of those statistics. You got plenty of guys here, though, especially a linebacker. Kalen Deloach, they're open to have him back. DJ Lundy. I mean, this trio of linebackers is one of the best in the country, along with Tatum Bethune. Um, they're incredibly deep on the side of the ball. You know, Braden Fiske as well. You know, he has 29 tackles. One of the transfers they picked up. Um, you know, I alluded to Joshua Farmer, 311 pounds. They got some size there on the interior. Fabian Lovett is a phenomenal run defender. Uh, this is an incredibly deep part of this football team, Nick, as we expected to. 
they expected it would be. They haven't exactly been stifling opponents by any means, but they certainly haven't been poor either. You know, they've only given up one game of 200 plus rushing. That was a blowout of Virginia Tech. Uh, Duke had a little bit of success in that game uh, until their quarterback got hurt. Um, other than that, though, they haven't been all that bad. They really, you know, held Miami in check under four yards per attempt. They're sitting at exactly four yards per carry allowed this year. 11 touchdowns. They haven't allowed a rushing touchdown in the last three games. You know, 139 yards per contest allowed on the ground. Uh, this is going to be a fun matchup to watch, Nick. You know, the guys we just talked about and praised for Florida against some absolute beasts for the Seminoles. This is certainly an interesting matchup here. I like this Florida State defense. They're a very good unit. 16.9 points per game, given up a pretty solid number for this team. 4.94 total yards of offense given up per play. I think that's a solid number, you know, below five. I like that number a lot. Set very nice number for this defense. They're not as physically dominant and not racking up as many sacks as we had hoped. Guys like Jared Verse, 29 total tackles, six and a half tackles lost, four and a half sacks. Patrick Payton, nine and a half TFLs. Three tackles for loss, nine pass breakups. Physical gets his hand up there, 30 total tackles. Fisky, 29 total tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, two and a half, uh, two sacks. 26 for Farmer, six and four and a half. Fabian Lovett, 17 and two. The three linebackers are huge for this team. Deloach leads the team in tackles for 59. Ten and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks. He really do it all. But Thune has 55. Lundy has 46. They each got four tackles for loss. Lundy has two sacks to pitch in. Those are very good numbers from this front seven. This is a very physical unit that produces and is very dominant here. When you have a young quarterback that's inexperienced playing in his first career, uh, I believe his first career start or you know first big start like this, you could definitely eat that alive if you're the Florida State defensive line. They have a good opportunity here. If they can stuff the run and force this quarterback to be making bad decisions, the secondary is going to pounce all over it. Indeed, his first career start. Um, this Florida State secondary, they've been really good this year. Um, of course, they haven't played the greatest of passing attacks. They did play LSU and Jane Daniels week one. And, I mean, they really held them in check, especially in the second half. Uh, some inflation on those numbers the late in that game by Daniels and crew. Um, other than that, though, they've been certainly playing some pretty poor passing attacks. You know, Miami, for example, Pittsburgh, Wake Forest. I mean, it's some very tough, uh, you know, asks for these oppositions, right? But 47.2% completion rating, that's still first in FBS. Eight touchdowns, eight interceptions. Um, again, the big plays this year at times have been a problem for them, especially against you know Clemson early on in the season. For the most part, though, over the last month or two, they have not cracked one bit. This is still a very talented backside of the ball, even if they are playing some tougher opposition. I would still have a lot of faith in them. You know, biggest problem here is their safety group. I'm not big fans of it. I think it's probably the weakest position group on the team. Akeem Dent, Shaheen Brown, I think they're certainly going to be seams available. Four guys like Eugene Wilson to get downfield with some speed to potentially make some plays. Um, but I don't think they're going to be open for business on the boundary. You know, Bernardo Green's phenomenal. Central Cypress has certainly had a little bit more struggles, but he certainly hasn't been awful by any means. And they're just dynamic in the slot. Greedy Vance, he has been terrific for them. Jerry and Jones as well is one of their top defenders. So, I mean, this is still a very good secondary, Nick, even if the lack of, of opponent is, you know, not the greatest. Um, this is not going to be an opportunity really for Florida to expose them. But again, down the, you know, in between the numbers with some of their speed at pass catchers might be able to get down there for a shot play or two. What do you expect here from this Knowles back end? I think this Knowles back end will hold up fine here. I think you're a little extra critical of this soon. I think they are having a good season. The eight touchdowns, to eight interceptions given up ratio is solid. They're giving up 2,000 pass yards this season, which I think is a good number for them so far. I'm pretty happy with that. If I'm a Knowles fan, Fentral Cypress has been good since coming over. Very good player. Eight pass breakups. Bernardo Green, 10 pass breakups and a pick for him. 39 total tackles. Akeem Dent, 30 total tackles for him. Looking good as well. This is a unit that I like. I think, like you said, there are some weak players in the back end position, especially at safety. But overall, this is a very strong physical secondary that's been really good against the pass here. And you know, when you have a quarterback like I continue to say, a court, young quarterback making his first career start. That's a recipe for disaster if you're a Florida fan. That's a tough matchup, certainly. Like another Florida defense. You know, we didn't exactly high, have high expectations for this side of the ball. Um, but they've been flat out awful. And I do want to go ahead and outline. There's like no seniors on this side of the ball at all. It's a bunch of underclassmen, which that's great for moving forward. Um, and this is a big opportunity for them to have a taste of a big upset and, you know, meaningful November football. Ball eligibility is on the line, a playoff a opportunity for the other team, which is a rival. So this is a great opportunity for them to show out. Um, you know, they played South Carolina on the 14th of October, gave up 465 yards, and that started a streak here, five straight games, allowing 450-plus. Gave up 700 yards to LSU, 11.5 yards per play there. Just gave up another 500-plus to Missouri. Um, the offense is battling hard, though, Nick, and that's why they've been able to stay in these games. Um, they got absolutely demolished with balance by Arkansas, though. 
Um, and they're just no good anywhere, it seems. I mean, they're giving up a lot of rushing yards, getting absolutely throttled uh, through the air. You know, go ahead and start with this run defense where they gave up 329 to LSU. Arkansas is terrible at running the ball. They had 200 plus. And Missouri, you know, the 177 for them, which, I mean, that's probably a solid number considering how much momentum the Missouri rushing attack had. Um, five yards per carry, though, allowed. 18 touchdowns this year, given up on the ground. And this is still a very good defensive line. Prince Lee, Unimonelli, 11 tackles for loss. He's a better pass rusher and he has run stop. But he's still going to be a tone setter. Tyreek Sapp is a great piece moving forward. TJ Searcy, a young player they like. Jamari Lyons, Kelby Collins, and, of course, Desmond Watson is full of size. So they have the players, I think, up front. I think it will certainly showcase some maturity. Will it start Saturday night? This is a young unit, which is a good thing if you're a Florida fan. I think, you know, you got to give Billy Napier time to mold these guys. There are some talented players. Scooby Williams is your top tackler on this front unit. 49 total tackles, four tackles for loss for him. Two forced fumbles. Prince Lee is a great player. 38 total tackles, 11 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. Your top sack getter, he's very good in the pass stretch. Cam Jackson, 29 total tackles. Tyreek Sapp, 23, four and a half tackles for loss, two sacks. CRC 23, two and a half for him as well. Kimber 21, Lions 20, Banks 18, Watson 9. These guys are not producing enough tackles in my opinion, which is certainly hurting this unit. They're giving up 27.9 points per game. Not a fantastic number. Giving up five yards per rush attempt as well. Really not what you want to see. I'm not super happy with that 6.67 total yards of offense per play for this team. I'm not very happy with this front seven. I expected more of them. Even if I had low expectations, a bit disappointed so far, but they are young. So I guess that's something positive for the future coming against this offense, even without Travis, though. This is a poor matchup. They could be in some trouble. Yeah, you know, Shamar James he got injured, uh, I believe it was before the George game. He hasn't played since, and you know, they've certainly missed him. They still got throttled earlier in the year against Kentucky, uh, but I certainly felt like this run defense would be at a better point in time moving forward though they certainly have a lot of players they're trying to build up their trenches Caleb Banks another one of those guys like you said Scooby Williams you know he's having a good year in terms of you know production he's gonna be the guy that lean on certainly hasn't been the most consistent performer though they've had you know guys like Derek Wingo get involved at linebacker uh Trejada Mitchell whenever he's been on the field so it's certainly been a bit of a disaster though for this front seven overall um, and I think Scooby Williams is actually the lowest graded defender on the Florida defense. And then you'll turn to the secondary, a group that, you know, guys like Devin Moore were expected to really break out this year. And he had a good uh, run in his seven contests. Uh, Jaden Hill has plenty of speed as well. Jordan Costello, a freshman, he's really broke out. He's been one of the top players for this defense. He is, you know, the leading tackler for this ball club with 59 stops. Has an interception as well, a couple pass breakups. So he's certainly bringing some oomph to this back end. Um, had the interception in the Arkansas game. Um, but overall, they've not been all that good, Nick. They rank dead last in college football in 20-plus uh, with, with 20, 40-plus yard passing plays allowed. The next closest has four less than that, USF with 16. So that's just how bad they are. They're giving up a lot of big plays through the air. Um, the secondary has just been completely awful. Jason Marshall's completely disappeared after, you know, a dominant freshman season. Jalen Kimber as well. That hasn't exactly provided the impact we thought he would. Overall, it's just been a disaster here. You know, they're blessed to have Castell break out, and that's certainly a nice building block moving forward. Bryce Thornton's gotten on the field a good bit this year, so they're really thrusting in some of these younger players, making an effort of trying to turn things around. But what comes with that is a lot of growing pains. Certainly a lot of growing pains. I think the biggest stat that really concerns me, the TD to interception ratio. They have three interceptions, giving up 18 passing touchdowns. Just a gaudy difference, 15. Not a good difference at all. Jordan Costell, though, I like him. I'm excited for his future. The 59 total tackles, the pick against Arkansas, like you said, the two pass breakups. I like that for him. Jaden Hill's been solid, 36 total tackles. Miguel Mitchell, 33. Uh, Bryce Thornton, in his appearances, he's getting in the games now. 30 total tackles. The secondary will be a good unit next year. They're not a good unit this year. They're a young unit, so certainly cut them some slack. They will get better over time. I'm hoping they can. Napier has been known to coach some solid secondaries in the past. This is a disappointing, obviously, dead last in FBS and 40-plus pass plays, like you said, by a large margin. Certainly a tough matchup. If they were playing Jordan Travis, I think he would absolutely torch this defense and it wouldn't be a contest. But now because of the whole new quarterback situation, it does make this contest a little more interesting. This is a bad secondary, though, that's getting going to get beat up potentially. 300-plus passing loud in four of the last five games. And they gave him 255 Arkansas as the one outlier. So they've just been getting dominated here as of late. Look at the tail to tape, the team comparisons. You look at quarterback, I'm not even really sure. Two backups here. Brown in his first career start. Rodmaker, like his second or third career start. Um, actually, I don't even know if 
he's got that many under his belt. Running back, though, Montreal Johnson, Trevor Etienne. I'm going to give them the edge. I really like what they're able to accomplish. Trey Benson and Tafali, though, these guys are certainly more healthy with their limited touches. Great efficiency this year. I'll go ahead and give Florida justice right there because they don't have a single edge the rest of the way. Nick, wide receiver, pretty clear and cut with Coleman and Wilson leading the way. Offensive line, like what they've been able to do in pass protection. Some better run blockers, I'd say, as well. Defensive front, easy edge for the Knowles, especially the linebacker with that dominant trio. It's been really impactful all season long. And again, their secondary first nationally opponent completion rating allowed. How do you feel about this, Nick? Because, uh, you know, quarterbacks up in the air. These running backs, though, they can be the complete difference maker for Florida. This is certainly a brutal tale of tape if you're a Florida fan. The quarterback, complete toss-up. I mean, this is a crazy matchup in a clutch game like this. I don't think I've seen a matchup between that has so much playoff implications with two quarterbacks making their potentially first career starts. Just crazy thing when you really look at it. This is a fair tale of tape, in my opinion, though. Florida State dominates on the defense. They sh- they really do dominate on the offense, but I think you can give it to, to the duo at Florida because I think that duo is just a very nice one-two punch when they're fully working. This is a fair tale of tape, in my opinion. It's just kind of funny and brutal to look at. Look at the final thoughts on the prediction. You know, I went back and forth on this game. Really wasn't sure what to expect. And that was before the injuries to the two starters. Now it's completely different. You really don't know what to expect for FSU. You got to get take comfortable. You got to be stout versus the run for four. You got to start fast. Make the Knowles feel the pressure with the backup on the road against your rival with the playoffs on the line. A lot to lose here. Nothing to lose for Florida. I think you're going to see some great gambles hold up in the red zone. You know, they're certainly going to give up a lot of yards. But if you can hold them the field goals, you'll have a great shot. Again, I don't know what to expect here, Nick. I certainly have more faith in the Knowles accomplishing their keys to the game than I do for Florida. So I certainly think that's where the difference will be made. 28-23, I'll take the Gators uh, to cover. Knowles to advance to, you know, uh, you know, one more week with their perfect record intact. Um, I think that's a pretty good assessment of what I think will happen. But again, this is a complete toss-up, especially in this environment. This is a rivalry that doesn't get talked about enough, in my opinion. Some incredibly historic games. The choke at the Doak in 94, which led to both teams appearing in the Sugar Bowl. They played again the Sugar Bowl two years later, where Florida won a national championship after previously losing in a one-versus-two matchup in the regular season in 96 in Tallahassee. They got their revenge and won the Natty for Steve Spurrier. Incredible uh, list of games the past 10 mat- meetings. Florida State is 7-3 and three against Florida, so I think I'm going to take them again to get this job done. I do like Florida State to win this game. I think it's must-watch television with two backup quarterbacks in with so much on the line with Florida State chasing a playoff berth, with Florida chasing bowl eligibility and trying to play spoiler, and that is a tough spot to be making a very start as a young quarterback. The Swamp, I've been there. It says 88,000 fans. That's the attendance. one. It's not above 100 like some of the SEC stadiums, but man, it is so loud in the Swamp. You can really barely hear yourself think if the fans are in it. They could certainly make this game a nightmare for Florida State very quickly. This is a fun, exciting game late night or primetime on this weekend. I like this matchup a whole lot. I'll be watching it. I'm going to take Florida State with the points, but, man, I'm not feeling confident about that. This game is a total toss-up, in my opinion. A crazy, crazy important game during rivalry week. Florida State should certainly look to add some style points, if possible, with their quarterback being out, as that could certainly draw up some controversy when it comes to playoff selection. It's me for today's episode, Nick. As always, appreciate you joining me Rivalry Week. A couple days away, couldn't be more excited. Super excited. This is when it gets really important in college football. Some great matchups on the slate. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Whew.